Hi everybody, Mr. Pash here. Uh, today I'm gonna give you guys an overview on our color scheme assignment. Uh, using printed materials and magazines to cut out some colors and forming some color schemes that's related to color theory. Okay, so looking over the color wheel here, um, we basically did uh, most of this when we mixed our paints, other than we didn't mix any tertiary colors like red orange, but we got the basic colors in there and we got the hues, the tints, the tones, and the shades. And that's what I want you guys to concentrate on for our color schemes, uh, because a lot of times when students learn um, some of the basic color schemes like complementary, uh, red and green, when I ask them let's come up come up with the complementary color scheme they'll just give me pure red and pure green and they don't really think about the tints tones and shades okay so we can get different aspects of a complementary color scheme thinking about those tints tones and shades as well as i want to add um some neutral colors like browns and beige beiges and even um black, white, and gray tones, okay? So what we want to do, basically, we wanna figure out what our color schemes are, okay? And I'll have on the page for you guys which ones I want you guys to do exactly, but here's a range. And the way people organize color schemes is using this color wheel, and they kind of dissect it and pattern it in different ways. And so, um, like for example, we got our monochromatic color scheme, which is just one color, but various shades, tints, and tones of that color. We have our analogous, which are colors that are neighbors. And usually you go only about three, maybe four. You don't really go past four on that one. So all those colors kind of stay in the same family. Okay. And you can use various tints, tones, and shades of those. Um, another popular one is our complementary, and those are um, colors that sit across from each other on the color wheel. Those are the opposites, which most of you guys may be familiar with. Um, perfect example would be like the Lakers color scheme, which is purple and yellow. And then um, split complementary, you guys will see a lot. Um, it's not my favorite because <laughs> it's a little hard to... I don't know, I just, it depends. Maybe I need to work with it more. Um, but those are complementary color schemes, but instead of using the opposite one, they kind of splice that and do the sides of what might be the opposite. I actually like uh, the dyads, okay? So it kind of skips over a color. And really, you know, this just is really a basis Okay, so really you can really experiment with a lot of various colors. Not really think about putting it into a color scheme. You can kind of just kind of, you know, feel with what you like. And, you know, um, if you accumulate different colors, you can position them and see how they feel. And if it feels like a good color scheme, you know what? That's good. Okay. Keep in mind, this is called color theory. So theory is never exact. It's just kind of an idea that... Um, people present that, um, you know, people become more attuned with and feel like it's correct. It gives them, gives people to, uh, something to work with um, if they do get stuck. And um, usually they're, you know, used quite often. So with some of these, like the analogous one and the complementary ones, they're used a lot. So they they must have some advantages that people are just kind of drawn to there. Um, so yeah, so what you guys want is uh, probably the hard part here is collecting stuff. And I got to thank Mr. Rep Representative uh, Harley Ruda here for some mail because uh, I got a nice little color here. And so what I want to do is start collecting this stuff probably first and see how many colors I can get. And I want to get some nice swatches here and get about at least uh, three by three quarters of an inch. You guys can cut them in the squares or circles or different shapes. 
And so we're just kind of creating different splotches here. And sometimes, you know, you'll see a cool color, but you don't have a lot of space to work with. Okay, so that's good. Nice flat color. Let's not forget about this guy's blue shirt. That's a nice shade of a dark, dark blue. Okay, so maybe I'll get in there and get that going on, okay? And really dark shade. Let's see if I can kind of get this whole thing here. Okay, sorry guy, took off your shirt. All right, nice dark shade of blue. Nice, probably it is like kind of a grayish, it kind of looks like it has a little bit of blue in it. That's what I want you guys to look at too, is when you guys are cutting these out, think to yourself like, is that really just gray? Or does it have some blue in there? Because if so, then it's a very, very dark tone of blue, okay? Because a lot of times we don't realize that. Our, our brains tell us all the time like, oh, that's gray, or oh, that's white. But sometimes, you know, whites can be a very, very light, yellow or a light light blue all right so nice splotch of blue there and i might cut out a couple because i might use it for some other color schemes here all right and i'm just kind of going slow here okay don't forget you know just because you don't see flat color like these trees right here this little part of the tree, I should just kind of rip off this whole page, is a nice kind of, uh, let's see, there's a light green. I'm gonna ask myself, does that have any gray in it or white? Maybe a little bit of white, it's kind of a tint of green. Okay, so speckled, but that should still work. Different color of blue in the pool in this section. Okay, sorry guy. Okay, then this section. So I got something different to work with. And then once you start coloring, or coloring, <laughs> cutting, you'll actually be like, Okay, you know what? I got a lot of different colors to work with. Now I got the grass. And so you're gonna start seeing more colors than you normally would. Like, you know, my brain's telling me, you know, that roof has nothing. But really when I look at it, I'm like, you know what? That's like a nice light tone of orange that I could probably use. Doesn't seem brown. orange I can use. You guys see that? Okay. So, and then, you know, even looking on the back of the page, look at all the different types of shades of green I can. So, try not to do these really small. Try to get, you know, a pretty decent amount to actually show the color. Okay. And try to, like, keep it pretty consistent. Like, this is, you know, kind of changing a lot, but it, it could work. All right, nice brown in the jacket or neutral. And here I just used only two pages here. I keep going. Give me a nice black. I don't want to add that to one of my color schemes. Because with these color schemes, you can always add neutral colors. Okay, neutral colors won't mess up your color scheme because they're neutral. All right, I think that's all I got there. <clears throat> it's pretty much got blues green so far and so you know even going through the magazine here got a nice pink going on is that a gray seems a little bit of greenish maybe i can add that and just kind of go through the magazine and see what you got there okay um so hopefully you guys were able to find some stuff here's just another piece of junk mail sorry lily campbell but it's a nice purple Kind of bluish purple. I can cut out there. Probably as small as I want to get here. Okay. And I can cut those into 
better shapes when I start posting them in my sketchbook, okay? So let's take a look at some examples that I already had placed here, okay? Using some magazines and um, kind of start with the complementary and analogous ones because those are uh, a little bit better. So complementary is opposite. So here I have orange and blue and I have a, instead of just a regular blue and a regular orange, I have a very, very dark blue and a lighter tone of blue. So I can add two different blues contrasted with the orange. It's really, it's a red orange, but kind of getting away with it. It'd be like a, a tint or sorry, a shade of orange, kind of a darker orange here. And then I added some neutrals, which are just kind of a regular beige, the lighter beige, kind of yellowish in there. So, but it still can work for our complementary color scheme. Okay. I would like you guys to add at least four steps here. So you guys can take out one and I would go four to five, maybe not more or less than that. So what I would do is kind of take a look at a color. Let's say we're going to look at analogous color scheme. Try to look for, you know, if we're going to do orange, red, reddish, orange, and red here like this, look for various tints, tones, and shades, and use, don't be afraid to use a saturated color, which you guys will probably do anyways, but try not to do all saturated colors, okay? Look for those tints, tones, and shades. Kind of subdue it. Settle it down a little bit. If it's just all pure color, could you imagine painting your room all those colors? Like you would go crazy. You would have a headache by the end of the day. So as artists, we kind of tone that down with those tints, tones, and shades. And um, even add in um, a monochromatic, or sorry, not monochromatic, a neutral color of a beige or any types of grays to add into your color schemes to kind of, you know, create some open space um, in between that color, okay? So that's what you want there. Here's an analogous color scheme. Uh, if we're looking at the color wheel here, we're looking at greens and yellows, okay? And here I have four, and I got a dark shade of green, a pure kind of emerald green, I kind of have this tone of yellow, kind of like a mustard yellow, and I have a gray as a neutral. And you can see how that just kind of, we got a vibrant green contrasted with more subdued green and yellow with a neutral that is neutral in between. And I think that looks pretty good. That's something I might be able to use in the future. And then also another analogous one, this one's getting towards, um, Let's say, well, this one's more dyadic, I would say, where this is kind of a blue green with a yellow. So we're kind of skipping something here. Not really good representation of blue greens on this color chart, but um, our blue here. Um, but we can see the various shades, tints, and tones here of those two, like kind of bluish green and yellows with a neutral brown. So that's looking pretty good. Okay, so that's what I would like you guys to do. Um, you know, mine's pretty messy, you know, it's just kind of a practice page, kind of, you know, experimenting with color schemes here, but uh, feel free to make this look as clean as you want. We're gonna label it with what color scheme you guys did there. And, um, I would even like you guys to, you know, I won't, I won't put it in the criteria, but I want you guys to kind of identify what you guys have here. So if this is, you know, a shade of blue, I want you guys to shade, like blue shade, orange shade, really this is red orange, red orange shade, because it's going to tell you that think about the color like exactly what that is and we this looks like a blue we can even put light tone instead of a darker tone and neutral beige 
even though it's kind of yellowish a little bit, which beige tends to be. And yeah, so just kind of start thinking about the color there. All right, so we're gonna do a total of four different ones. You guys can choose. Um, here I have seven, but four is fine. And I would like you guys to choose, you know, which type of color scheme you guys want here. Um, and maybe even invent your own if you really want. Uh, I'm okay with that, okay?